right friends welcome back to questions and answers so advanced this is week number 39 this is from 21st to 27th september let us look at the first question sfio sfio means uh, serious uh, fraud investigation office SFIO is a serious fraud investigation office. It is the multidisciplinary organization to investigate serious financial frauds, to look into the white collar crimes in corporate sector. If people are resorting to white collar crimes, this serious fraud investigation office comes into picture. So it is multidisciplinary organization which looks at white collar crimes in the country and financial intelligence unit this organization looks at suspect financial transactions especially with regard to money laundering or black money if somebody is depositing rupees 1 crore of rupees by cash in the banking system that information will go to financial intelligence unit so please don't forget the serious fraud investigation office is basically related to the investigation with regard to the white collar crimes and financial intelligence unit is the organization which looks at the suspicious financial transactions and the first sentence is absolutely correct the second sentence is wrong this is a serious fraud investigation office this works under ministry of corporate affairs whereas this financial intelligence unit works under the ministry of finance and this financial intelligence unit directly reports to economic intelligence council which is headed by the finance minister financial intelligence unit is most important organization which looks at the money laundering not only within india and if some foreign intelligence units require information with regard to the suspicious financial transactions fiu india will coordinate with fiu of other countries right please correct the second sentence and please don't forget serious fraud investigation office is with ministry of corporate affairs and financial intelligence unit is with the ministry of finance directly reporting to the economic intelligence council which is headed by the finance minister please don't forget look into the next one anti dumping duty and safeguard duty are imposed to protect the domestic industry absolutely correct there are three types of duties so please don't forget one is anti dumping duty this is imposed when the government feels that the importers are selling the products at lesser than market value deliberately they are selling at lesser than market value second is countervailing duty or anti subsidy duty countervailing duty or anti subsidy duty is imposed when there is a case that the government is giving subsidies in those countries agriculture enjoys lot of subsidies in several countries similarly several other industrial products may also enjoy subsidies in foreign countries because of subsidies they may be able to export their products to india at a lesser price under such circumstances anti subsidy countervailing duty can be imposed third is when temporarily there is a surge in imports because of the factors in the world then this safeguard duty can be imposed as a temporary measure so the given sentence here anti dumping duty and safeguard duty are imposed to protect the domestic industry is absolutely correct the second one is anti dumping duties are imposed when the importers are selling their products at less than the market price that is also correct and safeguard duties are imposed when there is a surge in imports and normally used as a temporary measure absolutely correct and the third sentence both of these are wto compliant is also correct world trade organization allows imposition of these duties when there is a strong case so 
In addition to these two, the third one is anti-subsidy countervailing duty, World Trade Organization, which is the trade regulator in the world, which was established in the year 1995, also allows anti-subsidy countervailing duty. So, these three duties can be imposed and there should be a case for imposition of duty, right? All the three given sentences are correct. So, the right option is fourth option. Look at the next one. Commercial paper issued by high rated corporates jumped from rupees 1.6 lakh crore in January 2014 to rupees 3.1 lakh crore in June 2015. I would like to tell you few points here. Commercial paper is issued by high rated corporates for borrowing money from market for short term, for less than one year duration, they issue commercial paper and borrow money from public and commercial paper is issued by high rated corporates and the pertinent question here is why do they go to market when banks and financial institutions exist for borrowing? The answer is they are getting money from the market at lesser interest rates in comparison to the borrowing from banks that's why they are issuing commercial paper and borrowing from public that's why the borrowing by issue of commercial paper jumped from around 1.6 lakh crore to 3.1 lakh crore within one and a half years this shows the interest rate in the banking system is high that's why they are borrowing from market so the first sentence is correct the second one is also correct these are short term debt instruments absolutely correct these are for a duration of not more than one year. They are called money market instruments in banking parlance. So please don't forget. Look at the next one. FSTC is headed by the finance minister. Absolutely correct. FSTC is Financial Stability Development Council. Basically to act as coordination among the financial regulators. You may ask, uh, what are the financial regulators? Financial regulators are Reserve Bank of India, Securities and Exchange Board of India, similarly IRDAI, PFRDA, these are all financial regulators and the heads of these regulators will be members in the Financial Stability Development Council and the head of the FSTC or you can say chairperson of FSTC is the finance minister and the first sentence is absolutely correct but the second sentence is wrong because of the reason all the regulators in the country are not members of FSTC only financial regulators will be members of the FSTC and please remember this DGCA means Directorate General of Civil Aviation or Troy Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. These are not financial regulators. Financial regulators are RBI, SEBI, then comes IRDAI, PFRDA. These are financial regulators. Previously, FMC was also financial regulator, but now it is merged with the SEBI. So, financial regulators represent as the members in FSTC. So, please correct the second sentence. Only financial regulators will be the members of FSTC and the FSTC is headed by the finance minister basically with a view to have coordination among various financial regulators in the country. So, the right option here is one. Look at the next one. India signed multilateral competent authority agreement. MCAA was signed on 3rd June 2015 and here this facilitates automatic exchange of financial account information. Now, India is also signatory of multilateral competent authority agreement. So, as per the target given by the target date, India is required to ensure automatic exchange of financial account information. Similarly, other countries also will exchange this financial account information and that is why there is possibility that the black money can be curbed in future because India is also signatory to multilateral competent authority agreement. Right? 
the first sentence is absolutely correct the second sentence is FATCA was signed with United States of America by India recently because of which it results in greater transparency with regard to tax matters between India and United States of America right so the second sentence is also correct so the given two sentences are correct the right option is 3 look at the next question there is a controversy with regard to the signing of uh, or you can say the prime minister's autograph on the indian flag in new york there is a controversy created when the prime minister during his visit to united states of america when he autographed indian flag given by a chuff in new york the first sentence is correct look at the second sentence as per the prevention of insults to national honor amendment act 2005 this original act is of 1971 subsequently it was amended in the year 2005 so therefore as per the prevention of insults to national honor amendment act of 2005 any insult to the national flag is a punishable offense what constitutes insult is very well written in this uh, act and if anyone violates this then it will tantamount to a punishable offense right so the given sentence second sentence is also correct so the right option is three now look at the next question cabinet committee on security cleared purchasing of 22 apache attack helicopters and 15 chinook heavy lift helicopters 15 heavy lift choppers you can look into this picture this is the chinook heavy lift chopper and this is uh, apache attack helicopter and the government cleared it this was uh, pending for uh, quite a few years and these are manufactured by usa based for boeing so the answer here is boeing and please don't forget boeing is based in united states of america and i would like to tell you a few more points about this so you can go through this ppt the deal which was uh, cleared before the PM's visit to United States of America is around $3 billion and some newspapers quoted $3.1 billion and this was pending since 2013. Now, Apache and this Chinook will be purchased by India at a cost of around $3 billion and during the past decade, American companies won contracts for around $10 billion from India. Please don't forget. Right, look into the next one. President of China Xi Jinping and the Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi were in USA recently and the trade between India and USA, the trade means mercantile goods, goods exports and imports put together is known as the trade. The total trade between India and USA is around 100 billion dollars and the trade between United States of America and China is 600 billion dollars. So, the trade between USA and China worth six times between India and United States of America and China's exports to USA worth around 450 billion dollars and USA's exports to China 150 billion dollars. So, the trade relation or you can say the trade ties between USA and China are much bigger in comparison to India-USA trade, right? Name the car company which admitted cheating in diesel vehicle emission tests through modifications in software. By modifying the software while doing emission tests, it has shown lesser emissions and actual emissions are much higher and they cheated by reducing the or you can say allegedly reducing the emissions in diesel vehicles and the company we are talking about is uh, Volkswagen and it is a big blow to Germany and credibility of Germany as a whole and more about this please listen to the lecture part. Name the country which announced breakthrough in peace talks with the FARC rebels. Pork rebels, 
they are active in southeastern part of Colombia. Please look into this picture. Where is Colombia? Colombia is in South America and these rebels are active for more than 50 years and they are with Marxism and Leninist ideology and anti-imperialist ideology. From 1964, they are active in Colombia and the actual name is Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, but in Spanish language, they are called FARC rebels and there was some understanding was reached recently. Peace talks were concluded at Havana in Cuba and it is a big breakthrough for Colombia. So, FARC rebels and government of Colombia finally concluded the peace talks and remaining things I have given in this PPT, you can go through it. Rare celestial event happened on 27th September when the moon is at its closest point to the earth in its orbit. Moon revolves around the earth, not in circular orbit. It revolves in elliptical orbit. Sometimes it comes nearer to the earth. Sometimes it is farther away from the earth. When the moon is closest to the earth, it is called perigee. And when the moon is farthest from the earth, that is apogee. And approximately, when the moon is closest to the earth, it is around 3 and of lakh kilometers distance. And when the moon is farthest from the earth, it is at a distance of around 4 lakh kilometers. And this nearest point and farthest point arises because of the elliptical orbit of a moon around earth. It is not a circular and when the moon is closest to the earth, the moon is known as a super moon. And when lunar eclipse occurs on the day when moon is closer to earth, that is called super blood moon. I would like to tell you once again, when the moon is closest to the earth, that is known as super moon and when lunar eclipse coincides with the super moon, that is known as the super blood moon and recently super blood moon occurred for the sixth time since 1900 and next time it will occur in the year 2033. Remaining things I have given in this PPT, please go through them, right? Yudhavir Singh Malik was posted as additional secretary in Niti Aayog and he was previously CEO of Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Yudhavir Singh Malik was transferred subsequent to this Maggie controversy because FSSAI is the food regulator. He was a CEO of FSSAI and he is now posted as additional secretary in the Niti Aayog. And why I asked this question is Maggie controversy and regulator is FSSAI. And in the month of July, Ashish Bahuguna was appointed as the chairman of FSSAI. Right? And please look into the next one. Marathi Film Court selected as India's entry to the best foreign language category of the 2016 Academy Awards. Academy Awards means popularly known as Oscar Awards. This court was selected as India's entry to the best foreign language category and it is to compete with the 62 other films for getting award. Right? And this jury was headed by famous filmmaker Amol Palekar and it is shortlisted from 30 films. The director of this film is Chaitanya Tamhane and this is a Marathi film and the producer is Vivek Gombar. Please don't forget. Eritrea is in news recently. It is in the Horn of Africa. You may ask where is Horn of Africa? Please look into this picture and there are four countries in Horn of Africa. And these countries are Ethiopia, Somalia, Eritrea and Djibouti. Please look into this picture. These four countries projects towards the eastern side. And these four countries are known as Horn of Africa. Please don't forget. And Eritrea is into news frequently because of the reason of alleged human rights violation and mass migration to Europe from Eritrea. 
which of the following is not published by Central Statistics Office? I would like to tell you, Central Statistics Office publishes Consumer Price Index, GDP and IIP. Central Statistics Office produces three things, IIP, CPA and GDP figures. It may produce some other information. I am talking about uh, uh, major macroeconomic indices. And if you look at the office of the economic advisor, this is under Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And this uh, releases wholesale price index and growth of uh, core industries. Please don't forget this office of the economic advisor publishes wholesale price index as well as the growth of eight core industries and out of eight core industries electricity has got more weight and fertilizers has got least weightage remaining things i have given in this ppt please go through it government is planning to announce indcs on 2nd october indc stands for intended nationally determined contributions with regard to the reduction in emissions this INDCs, each country voluntarily will commit and these will be discussed in the Paris conference or you can say COP21 which is going to be held from 30th November in Paris. So, INDCs are voluntary emission reduction contributions or you can say countries are coming forward declaring their intentions that's why they are called intended nationally determined contributions or indcs right friends with this let us conclude the questions and answers uh, advanced please do join for questions and answers general and banking have a nice day thank you